Hi, Chef Melfi, thank you so much for joining us today for this culture talk on Italy with Modena, your restaurant. So um, tell me a little bit about you, about the restaurant, how long you've been there when you started. Um, pleased to have you. Sure, sure, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I'm um, <clears throat> the executive chef of Modena restaurant here in Washington, DC. I've been here a little over a year. Um, it's been an interesting year to say the least with you know the situations at hand, but we've been making the best of it. Um, I've worked for this owner in the past, so I've already worked with uh, Mr. Bajaj in the Knightsbridge uh, restaurant group for about almost four years, and I left and I, I'm now back. Um, so um, yeah, it's been an exciting adventure. Awesome. So tell me a little bit. So the restaurant opened last year, is that right? Yes. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about, you know, a bit more about your background. How did the passion for expressing Italian culture through food start? Um, you know, how and when, and then how do you liken that to how, um, depending on your, your craft particularly and what you like to express through the menu and um, the overall ambiance at the restaurant, how do you liken that to restaurateurs in Italy or the region that, you know, you focus on? Yeah, <clears throat> so um, I kind of got started about 24 years ago. Um, my grandmother and my my entire family is Italian. Um, so I started off at a very young age cooking with her, very home style, you know, pastas and everything. Um, but I didn't always cook Italian food. So about 24 years ago, I started out with kind of some French cuisine, kind of traveled up and down the East Coast and um, learned some Southern cuisine in Charleston. I was in Naples, Florida and Pittsburgh. Um, and then I ended up in DC about 13 years ago. Um, when I came here, I actually went to a Southern style restaurant here in DC um, called Lydalia. And um, that was my first step into DC, but it was Southern oriented. So I figured it would be an easy transition. But shortly after that, um, I moved um, to Fiola Mare when it first opened. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I really started to cook Italian food. So I do love Italian food. It's always been at the core for me. Um, and I think it's because of my upbringing. Um, and, um, you know, I love uh, making pastas. Pasta is one of my favorite things to make. Um, you know, it's made with love and hands, um, you know, it's made by hand and, and um, it's a real craft, it's an art. Um, here at Modena, what we're, what we're focusing on here and what makes us fun and interesting is, um, first of all, we have an antipasti cart. So on this cart, we do between seven and eight different antipastis that rotate daily. Um, so we go from like a ricotta and spinach tart to, you know, a cal grilled calamari salad with blood oranges, fig and arugula, beets and gorgonzola dolce. And we actually bring that cart through the dining room and we would actually would, would serve you. We have extra, you know, extra virgin olive oil, some balsamics, different salts, um, uh, different cheeses, parmesans. Um, it's on a little bit of a hiatus now, but that was definitely our... Um, you know, our motto um, in the beginning, we kind of created our menu around this. We wanted something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, you would see this a lot in, you know, trattorias in, in Italy um, and in bistro type of restaurants. Um, they would have this, especially in the lunchtime, and they would have it a little bit more elaborate and more, you know, some have buffet style and whatnot, but we wanted to put it on a beautiful cart with, you know, um, beautiful Bordeaux, um, Bernadeau plates and all kinds of different flatware and, you know, make it unique. Um, so we're still doing that. We're just doing it from the kitchen. Um, so we kind of inspired, you know, the restaurant was inspired behind that. Um, we also kind of wanted to work a lot with the local farmers here in DC um, and in Italy, you know, the produce, the, you know, the farm, the farming in general is just amazing. I think we're second to Italy in the farming department and as far as like high end quality and just being heirloom and, 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 you know, Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, all very close. I've worked extremely close with all the farmers here in the area. I visit the DuPont Circle Farmers Market every weekend. We feature the produce and, you know, the pears and the seckle pears Asian. We're doing um, honey nut squash from the farmers right now. Um, all kinds of stuff. So we try to focus there. 
Mm -hmm. um, the cuisine, we don't always say we're totally traditional um, to Italian across the board. Um, we do kind of say that we're a little bit of California inspired. So we, we stay close to the, the, the vegetables um, and the local produce and local seafood and whatnot. <clears throat> but um, at the heart of it, with the pastas and everything, we definitely stay very traditional. So we're kind of torn, but, you know, I like to stay current. I like to stay modern, you know. Italians are very set in their ways. When it's bolognese, it's bolognese. And if you put X in bolognese, it's not bolognese anymore. So please don't do that. Um, I actually um, date a wonderful Italian um, here on a visa from Turin, uh, Torino, Italy. Um, and, you know, she's always commenting on stuff, you know. And I say, well, you know, we don't always claim to be super traditional, you know. So um, back to the pastas, though, which is really cool, is that we are milling all of our own grains for just our pastas. Um, so we're getting local organic grains grown here in Maryland, and we're grinding them fresh every day. So the nutritional value and also the flavor, blind taste test, bare pasta, anybody in the room will pick out what has more flavor. So that is kind of our motto. Got it, got it. And it's interesting that you say, you know, you kind of try to merge that, the tradition with your own sense of the craft. So to me, that sounds like you, you find a way to merge the local culture with the traditional culture so that people, you know, when they walk in, they feel that comfort. So that's what that speaks to me. And so the fact that you, you and the restaurant are very intentional about making sure that people have that experience, I think... Um, is something that can be uh, appreciated. And so that's really wonderful that you all do that. Um, tell me a little bit more, um, and we talked a little, you mentioned the menu. I mean, that all sounds amazing. The milk pastas and, and the grains and all of that. And I totally get, um, you know, the fact that you try to stay traditional to the pastas just given the regions. And tell me a little, do you feel that, you know, um, you talked about the heirloom, I assume like the tomatoes and things. Do you feel like regionally California is likened to how things are in like the um, the Modena like province or the, the the region of kind of that whole region of where Bologna is? Like, do you feel like there's parallels there that you try to carry through? Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely do. You know, um, we spoke about earlier on the climate is very similar. Um, there's definitely grapes grown in that region in both mm -hmm. regions. Um, Modena is known for its balsamico. They're one of their is exports and their main things is balsamico. We feature three or four from here at all times from there. Um, second is Parmigiana Reggiana. So Parmesan, that's the birthplace. That is the hub of Parmesan. Um, so we definitely feature multiple. We have one year farms. We have three year old farm um, on our menu at all times. So we really focus on those two ingredients a lot. Mm -hmm. um, um, Modena is considered, it's in the region of Emilia Romagna. So Emilia Romagna is considered kind of the Mecca for food. It's there by Tuscany, you know, it's just north of that. Um, it's also where I believe like Ferrari and a lot of the cars come from. So they're really known for the cars and the food. Um, obviously we're focusing on, so we really focus on the food here, um, of course. Um, so, yes, fo focusing on, you know, what comes from that region, we do try to do that as much as possible. Got it. Okay, perfect. No, that's great to know, especially given the name. I mean, a lot of times people don't think about, you know, the, the significance behind how restaurants are named and, and what the influence is. And so the fact that it does relate to that and so significantly that, you know, it's, it's known as I read somewhere as the foodie's paradise. Um, and so that you bring a little a bit of that, just like you said, uh, you bring the the regional, uh, or how do you say, almost like a, not the souvenir of the, the region, but uh, you know, you feature things that are well known there and that you carry that through to the experience at your restaurant. So that's really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit more about the presentation style. So if we think of the, what do you feel is the, are the most defining qualities of your restaurant um, compared to having food or drink over there when it comes to the presentation or, or the tradition or even, you know, the cultural itself? I mean, you touched on Italian culture as a whole. Is, it's got to be this way, you know, when it comes to certain dishes. But tell me a little bit about that. So I, I'm, I love this question. 
So I definitely think outside the box here. Um, I definitely try to plate um, using lots of delicate flowers and microgreens. Um, so we do a few plays on things. So my grandmother in calamari, she always made a stuffed calamari around Christmas and we look forward to it Christmas Eve every year growing up. But hers was stuffed with breadcrumb and cheese and garlic and parsley and it was simmered in tomato sauce. Um, and uh, it was the best. Um, mm -hmm. So what I do here is I stuff mine with some house-made Italian sausage, a little bit on the spicy side. We grill that calamari. We serve it with the fried crispy tentacles. Um, we also put it with avocado. So therefore, it's way outside the box. Mm -hmm. Avocado cuts the heat. It goes. It gives a nice, cool, creamy texture. Mm -hmm. um, it gives it a nice, uh, you know, baseline to ride on. We have um, a periwinkle snail uh, vinaigrette that goes with that. You don't really see periwinkle snails very often. We have them on the way now, um, coming from Maine. They're um, like pre-ordered. I ordered them three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and they're a little tiny baby snail that we actually have to get out of the shell with a toothpick. And we use probably 15 of them on each dish. And we buy by 30, 40 pound bags. Um, and those will be coming here tomorrow. We finish it with like Meyer lemon and trout roe um, and red vein sorrel. So that's kind of one of the plays um, that we do here that's been on the menu since day one. Mm -hmm. Another one is a salmon raviolo. So we do a raviolo. There's no pasta involved. It is actually citrus cured salmon that everybody knows and loves. We make um, a ravioli out of that and we fill it with lemon whipped mascarpone. Now, cream cheese, lemon whipped mascarpone, all this is like a classic pairing. And then we, we, we actually landscape the entire, well, first we put it in a beautiful floral bowl. And then we landscape the entire raviolo that's probably five inches in length by four inches wide. Um, and we put a nice salad of everything we have, all the frisee, arugula, pickled peppers, squid ink, tuile for crunch, and lemon cells. So there's lots of different, it's like an adventure on every bite. That's another play. So if that kind of gives you an idea on a lot mm -hmm. of dishes. Now, with pastas, I tend to stay more straightforward. And uh, I have a bolognese from Bologna um, that, you know, everybody loves a good bolognese. And I have a pasta that I've been making for years. And, we stick to that one, but we just do our house uh, house milled um, flour. Got it. And so, as you were speaking about that, what kind of came to mind is, you know, there are like you said these traditional dishes, you know, the bolognese. But then it's like going to someone's home, so that even though, like you said, with the mascarpone being a classic pairing with something else, but if you're going to walk to someone's home, they're going to have a different way of presenting it that kind of relates to how they their craft, what their craft is, you know, and so that kind of, right. so I get that, I get that, um, you know, you try to keep, like, like you've been saying all along, this, a bit of the tradition, but also um, showcasing things in new ways so that, you know, um, it, it really gives people an idea of what is unique about coming to Modena, you know, and experiencing it uh, there. So let's talk a little bit about travel. Um, where and when have you been over to Italy, um, and what are amongst some of your favorite things to see and do? Well, so I've only been to Italy twice. So obviously, Italy, there's so much to see and do. Um, it's always, you know, I've always focused it around food, but I did it as a as a travel, you know, as a as a break from work, um, as opposed to like a research trip, you know. Um, so I've been to Rome and Florence and Venice and um, Amalfi Coast, which was probably one of my favorites. Again, kind of hitting on the vacation um, relaxation aspect um, and just the beautiful scenery and the olives and the lemons and uh, Campania um, with these uh, lemoncello and, and whatnot. Um, but, um, you know, I had to visit Venice. I thought Venice was very unique. Obviously, it's something that you would want to see if you're there. Um, and, you know, you have a risotto nero. Um, they do. They're famous for their risotto with the squid ink and calamari. Um, so, cacio e pepe in Rome. That was like a must-have for me. It was on every other corner, um, you know, for euro, for, you know, a bowl of pasta and add a... You know, another euro and you have a glass of wine with it, you know, a little a small glass of table wine and you're sitting out on the street, um, you know, with the hustle and bustle having the gotcha with that bit. Um, so those are some of the memories that definitely stand out to me. Mm -hmm. um, but um, 
lastly, um, I will um, possibly in the future in my plans would be to open a small restaurant in Turin. Um, it's definitely on my horizon and in the works as far as, you know, financing and things, but still probably two years away. Got it. Got it. Well, that's great. And as you mentioned that, I mean, I feel like that's probably what people would would feel that Italy is like to experience. And the fact that it is authentically like that, you know, um, you know, and that that you representing both the Italian culture and also, you know, the restaurant itself representing that, that that's what you feel, you know, really stands out, um, speaks to kind of the genuine nature of the whole thing. So that's really wonderful. So if you, if you think about kind of the spirit or way of life, of the people, um, or just the, the interactions that you have there or have had there, what do you feel if you had to think, um, that you carry back with you or that you have carried back with you? And if, if there is a way that, um, that experience has kind of inspired, uh, your approach at the restaurant, tell me a little bit about that. Definitely. You know, and something else I, that I forgot to mention would be the markets. I remember the, the, the best market, the vegetables, the color, the flavor was so authentic and rich. Um, um, so what I think I would answer to that is, you know, I'm trying to put it the right way, but in Italy, in most of the parts, it, it, what I felt was they're still heritage their heirloom so to speak they're they're a little bit behind the times in a lot of things but in a good way what i what i enjoyed seeing the farming techniques um the way they eat the way they they have a passion in the craft that they do um the prosciuttos they're creating all these traditions they've been doing for generations and how it stays in the family it seems to stay in the family there these generations of you know if your dad was a butcher you're a butcher and your son better be the butcher type of thing um so i think you know bringing the passion and the craft um again kind of kind of centering it again bringing it back to the pasta but we could buy we could buy pasta we could buy good pasta we could make good pasta but why not make your flour? We make different blends. We also do four different gluten-free pastas. So we're trying to, you know, again, broaden, learn and, and, and grow as a chef and as a company and a restaurant, and also bring that to the table in the form of like love, you know, and passion. Um, so you have, you know, creativity in there, but back to bringing, what bringing from Italy, I would say the passion, the vegetables, the, the, the slow food movement. Got it. Yeah. So that really comes, I mean, that really comes through. I mean, just listening to the background, even at your restaurant right now, I feel like, you know, you could picture that same hustle and bustle, like in the market or, you know, dining over there. And so, um, you know, you also bring that through with, you know, just as far as the senses and actually getting into a little bit more about the senses. What do you feel um, are some things uh, that, essentially transport your customers or your guests through sight, sound, taste, the ambiance and decor. I know you talked a little bit about the plates and, and the flatware and, and all of that. Tell me a little bit more about that and how you feel that Italy is represented through it. Yeah, um, so right behind me, we have murals, we have artwork, Italian artwork all throughout the restaurant. Um, the Italian music is constantly playing. I actually turned it down for this um, interview, but Italian music is always on. Um, the, the style, like the orange umbrellas out front that you would see, you know, at a trattoria. Um, so, yeah, definitely. The Antipasti car, for sure, 1,000%, you know. And um, so it was definitely, the owner, for sure, um, was definitely in Italy um, to to research um, several times um, before opening this restaurant. He had one other Italian restaurant as well um, before this, but um, it was a little bit more of a trattoria. This one was just like an osteria, more or less, um, before. And this is just a step up from that, um, which has really opened the doors to kind of being more, a little bit more modern, modern and, and finesse and a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of a street, you know, stray away from the traditional um, techniques and aspects. 
Yeah, that's great. Because a lot of times people think that, okay, they walk into a restaurant, it's all about the food. Like, what does it taste like? And what does it taste like to me? And how do I experience it? But a lot of times they're not thinking about, you know, what comes through in terms of the perception from what they learn. Um, so that's wonderful. So no, that's really great. Thank you so much, Chef Melfi, for sharing that and the story behind Modena and how you express the, you know, the, the full spectrum of culture when it comes to, you know, not just the food, but the way that you represent the culture through the ambiance and the, and the decor and the, you're very intentional when it comes to the menu and the ingredients that you all use there at the restaurant. And I mean, it, I feel like people could really experience well, the, the, the full depth of the Italian culture just walking in uh, to your door. So I really want to encourage everyone to come out and um, get to know you and your team and come and try uh, the restaurant out. Yes, I mean, we have a story behind most dishes. You know, there's extensive training for our servers just to bring the passion from the kitchen to the guests. It's a very important part that a lot of people don't always focus on. Um, so we do, you know, Saturday training every week and we go over the depth of where this dish is from, why we're doing it, what are we doing differently? What are we, what makes it special? Where are we getting the ingredients for this dish? Um, before we even let them taste. And then we bring that story to the guest. It's a very important element to our story here at Modena. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Thank you again for your time and for sharing that story. And I hope people will come out and, uh, and, and try it out for themselves. Please, thank you, ciao.